We've got a great ITL on distortion. Uh, this guy's career is not distorted at all. From Rihanna to Rascal Flatts, you're going to meet a hot. Uh, he's no longer can say up and comer. This guy's just period hot. Uh, we've got a great giveaway for you. The usual grab bag of good stuff. You know you're at the place. Pensado's place. Hey everybody, glad to have you back this week. It was a fun week. Uh, we got a little sleep this week, didn't we, Drew? <laughs> well, kind of. It was a great week. We worked on a record for Chris Anacute that I'm real excited about, this artist, Avery. Mm -hmm. And she's really good. Um, and uh, a lot of good things, a lot of good things. Richard, Renee, we worked with them, got some good stuff with them. It's been a fun week. Yeah. What else has kept you busy? The foreigners, lots of blockers. So Besides like, my prostate, you mean? Well, no, I just thought, well, <laughs> well, there we go. That might be a little bit too much information. <laughs> I just thought I'd try to trip you up and see. In what? case you guys don't know, the whole show and the whole focus of the show is just to make Herb stutter and forget where he's at. And so we, far, you've been wildly successful. Well, we've been doing the show since the 1960s, and I have yet to mess you up. You're uh, just, you're just, your mind must be like... Let's, let's get off me. We got, we got better, better stuff to do. One of the things we should do is we want to absolutely thank, uh, we had a good time last week. Oh, uh, yeah. You want to talk was, about it? You started off, I'll just jump well, in. Well, uh, we got, we often get, and Dave in particular, but sometimes we both do it, uh, we get invited to speak at certain kinds of things. You guys are gracious enough to ask us to come out. Um, and a lot of the places that comes from are oftentimes schools. Uh, last week we got, we, well, we got invited a couple weeks ago to the Los Angeles Film and Recording School uh, a great lady named Candace Kohler who what was what was fun about it was how much she cared about her students what was great for us was the ridiculous reception that we got wasn't it a good time it was great you did an incredible job like like all the graphics and the movies I mean I felt like a rock star walking <laughs> on that stage Shout it, was out. A, it wasn't Drew it was sushi. <laughs> oh yeah we got free sushi we had a green room we had well, a green room we sent a when we sent a rider, but shout out to Will for helping in that setup. But oh, but again, yeah, bigger shout out to the students. We were talking yeah. on Facebook. They were, Everybody there was named Jason, if I remember. There are a lot of people named Jason there, <laughs> <laughs> but they were incredibly yeah. smart about it. Yeah, incredibly, th thanks guys, man. Incredibly passionate. That's so that's, good that's one of my favorite experiences because I I, I I enjoy doing the live talks and stuff. I've been doing it for twenty years. And that audience was sharp as a tack. Yeah, they the were. Questions were great. Um, it, it was just, it was just a. Um, I mean, another thirty minutes, we'd been singing "Kumbaya." It was that good, <laughs> and it was indicative of the passion that you guys have for the space and how how committed to. So, anyways, thanks to them, Thank thanks you. to Candace, thanks and Candace. thanks to all the schools who reach out for us. We we find it interesting to do. Hopefully, we didn't waste your time. Um, as usual, let's do a little bit of our homework. Um, you know where to reach us. This page will pop up, and there it is. So, Twitter, you can get to us. We see you and talk to you a lot at our Facebook page. Uh, obviously, our YouTube channels where you can catch the show. Um, and for those interested, you can catch the show live, Justin TV, 12 noon Pacific time on Thursdays, which is right now. So, for those of you who like to tune in. Uh, we always like to welcome our partners, Vintage King. I was on the website a lot. Their website a lot, so they got so much information. I'm still confused about converters. Well, see, if you're confused, you can go to Drew Towson, who's in the Drew Towson's in the chat room, and his page is up on the screen as well too. So they'll be there to answer your questions. Um, hey, Drew, was it just me, or was that that little segue was a little on the slick side? He's good. Oh, good? Cool. He's good. Some, somebody has to be. Good. So, <laughs> somebody has to be good. <laughs> so here, I need you to do the Vanna White because you know what I've it's time I've got a saying, Herb, it's better to be new than good. I so. know. You use that a lot. So yeah. you hold this. Oh, thank you. And let's talk about the fact that Vintage King, uh, our Shadow Hills giveaway, there it is. Dave's doing a, it's the mono optograph. You can see where to win right below Dave's. It's got a, it's got a more button. It's got a fat button. It's got a. Oh, this this is the make you sound like Jack Joseph Puig button. And you see where to where to enter right underneath me and Dave. Uh, this this weekend, is an incredible piece of gear. Greg Wells has this. And he's, he he loves it. Absolutely. And you know what else Greg Wells likes? Our guest, because I saw a really cool comment on yeah. Facebook where Greg Wells said our guest is a great guy, which we'll find out a little bit. So enough of our homework, enough of our stuff, enough of our setup, enough of our thank yous. Um, why don't we get to before you? 
prove that you can't break it because it's such <laughs> such a great piece yeah. of gear. I don't want to be redundant, but I just love big knobs. Pause. Drew, help me. Pause. Okay, pause. So here's what we have to make sure we introduce. He's our, uh, we've got you in the chat room. Um, he's not the DJ, he's our CJ, and he loves to make a point. Drew. Oh, man, you're going to make me point. No, Drew! <laughs> Son of a bitch! It's the internet, we can't do that? Wow. Drew. Cut it out. Not till we get on HBO. No, we just get this fine. <laughs> so, anyway. Man, the FCC. Brian is convinced that he should not have done this show right about Man. now. <laughs> why don't we, uh, why don't we, I hear you did a great AT Brian ITL. Is, Brian is still, still figuring it out, but Erin is convinced. Yeah, Erin's She's like, a pro. God, she knows that trouble. this stuff is. I'm in trouble <laughs> with Brian Lee. So he's going, why did you put me on this show? These people are crazy. Uh, why don't we introduce ITL and get it rolling? Okay, guys. Um, One of, one of my pet peeves is the word distortion because music has color to it and that color is harmonic uh, uh, content. We, we, we talk about orders and harmonics and, and so many times distortion is, is labeled incorrectly but it's a, it's a way to add color to sound and a lot of times that color that you add to a sound will help you find it in a track and a lot of what we like from the analog world is actually the, the, the color or the distortion that's added from that world. In the digital world, we hate it, but in the analog world, we worship it. So what I, I thought I'd show you is, is a couple of ways this week and next week to add some color to your sound. So Will filmed this with us yesterday. Um, I'd just gotten out of the shower. My new hair color was sparkling in the wind. And um, I think I forgot to shave. Check it out. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another ITL. I thought I would go over some uh, elements of distortion. This will uh, be more an introductory thing to distortion. Um, distortion is basically, uh, like we said several times, it's a bad term because it, it implies like the elephant man or something. And really, it, distortion is uh, a rich collection of harmonics. It, it's, it's like harmonic distortion uh, sometimes called THD, total harmonic distortion, which is a, a measure of, of um, the amount of, of harmonic coloration, you, 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 and, and it's described in terms of first order, second order, third order, blah, 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 blah. Uh, go to Google, type in uh, audio distortion. The first four or five uh, pages that come up have real good stuff. I'm going to show you one of them. This is, uh, uh, Will's going to put up the website. It's like a third or fourth one, but uh, there's a lot of good information here, um, and we're not going to delve in that today, but um, uh, if you notice, basically he says that uh, Moyer has found that distortion due to clipping of a 4 millisecond tone burst reached about 10% before it was detectable, but increasing the pulse length to 20 milliseconds reduced the just detectable distortion point to around 0.3%. That's Think about that. That's that's a that's a pretty bold statement. So um, let me show you something else. What we have here is this is a this is a basic square wave and then a little bit of a sine wave. Uh, it's the same thing as here, but this is the website, and uh, I just wanted you to see it clearly. Now on this green um, wave, this is the same wave as above, except this green wave. Uh, it's gone through a high-pass filter. But Dave, a high-pass filter isn't distortion. Yes, it is. It's distorting the wave. You see, you see what's happening to this square wave? It's sloping down. That's, a, that's what a high-pass filter does to, to the sound. It, it, it can actually be a distortion. Uh, the, the blue and the purple one is a low-pass filter. Now, um, you can see this, this represents a capacitor, this is a, uh, this is a resistor. We call this an RC network. It's a time constant network that's used a lot in electronics. And um, in, in this way, the, 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 it's shunting certain frequencies to ground through this circuit. You don't need to know that, I'm just showing off. Uh, now on the pink one, <coughs> that would be characteristic of a tube circuit. Now a, a tube circuit has a low amount of, of, of harmonics are generated in that circuit so that that's actually adding distortion but 
over the time, over time, we, we consider that color in, 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 in the analog world, color is good. In the digital world, for some reason, color is bad. Don't know why. I never got the memo. Uh, and then the orange one is um, a hard clip. Now, when you, when you clip the sound, you're, you're generating harmonics, you're generating color, and that's what the orange one is, is showing you. You can tell that by, by this, the graph here as opposed to this graph. Okay, enough technical stuff. Basically, what all we give a crap about is what it sounds like. Uh, I'm going to play some examples from something I just recently mixed with the artist Dream. Uh, some, of these, uh, some of these settings I inherited from Pat Thrall, who's an incredible engineer, producer, extraordinaire. And so, um, thank you, Pat. I'm, I'm using some of the plugins that, that, you, that you gave me. Some of them I'm, uh, are things I added myself. Um, here's a little, a little extra vocal. Okay, now, that was in the track. This is it. Okay. Now, now, now what, what we added was... Our old buddy, just to take out a little bit of a little bit of twelve fifty, and then um, a little EQ. Now that's pretty cool. But now I added the fuck box. Cool. And then with a, and then with a little delay. Okay, that's one use of of, um, of distortion. Now let's see. Let's look for a bright blue track. Here we go, kick drum. Now what I did on this kick drum was it, it, it was pretty good. So let's take this stuff off. Uh, this is without anything. Now I added the, the Kramer Waves Kramer PIE. Things magical. Waves API. Now to add a little distortion, I'm using the Massey Tape Head plugin. Watch. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then and then our old buddy Steven Slate add a little bit of uh, the trigger. And then here's my parallel path feeding from here to here. Nothing radical on the on the parallel path. But then we're adding. Okay, so you can see how that 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 uh, Massey plugin was was adding a little bit of tape distortion. Now the analog guys prefer not to call it tape distortion; it's tape color. Sorry. Okay. Now here's a synth that we had in the track. Pat had a pitch, pitch blender. I can't remember if Pat did this or me. I think it's me because it's my rap squash setting. And then a little E6. Now I wanted to add a little color, so what I did was I, I, I copied the track. I think I did this, Pat might have done it, but, but what's important is this is an overdrive distortion guitar pedal from Waves. So let's add that in. Without it. With it. Only it. Okay, so you can see, you can see how we're using distortion to to add some color, add some clarity, help your ear find it. Um, one last one. This is a synth part. And this is a different kind of distortion. Um, this, this, um, 
them do. I thought that was pretty good. So our old buddy Matthew Lang, the the, the Doctor MS plug-in. Uh, this is a preset of mine. I, this is adding a little bit of color and distortion and middle side manipulation. Then I use the double lock. This is um, sound toys. This is basically an emulation of an overcompressed mic, but with a cheap compressor, and it creates harmonic distortion. Watch this. So you see here, we're talking about color. We're talking about colors. Now I'm going to load up another session, so if you'll hang on a minute, Will. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if you know this, Herb, but the way I look, you know there's a move afoot in Congress to make ugly a protected minority class. Wow. And um, I'm pretty sure I qualify after that video. Let's send it off. I had to pull back. Let's send it off to the... Because <laughs> we're such good friends. Yeah, buddy, we're not both minorities. <laughs> welcome. Ugly welcome. and we can Canadian American or we whatever it is, or whatever the hell you are I'll this show week. I'll you how to get through it all. Listen, everybody, uh, I, I'm really excited and proud. I've, I've, I've followed this cat's career for, for a while now, and um, I knew there was always some incredible talent and depth there. And uh, I'm so proud to have Brian Kennedy with us today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Brian before I introduce him. Uh, Brian won a Grammy for uh, his work with Jennifer Hudson, uh, Disturbia with Rihanna, and uh, Forever, Chris Brown. He had the number one and two song at the same time on the charts with those two songs. I, the first thing I remember from Brian was uh, My Love, Ciara, incredible. He just finished... Um, Kelly Clarkson song. He just hummed a few bars of that. Maybe we can get him to sing it for you guys. Uh, but what, what separates Brian besides massive talent from a lot of the other producers currently working today is he also has a, a smash with Rascal Flatts. I mean, the man can do anything. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think he's writing operas, and I, I heard he's producing the new ACDC uh, record that's coming out. Um, Brandy, Faith Hill. I mean, just, just an incredible talent. Um, uh, he he did the he did the uh, Rascal Flats with our buddy Dan Huh. Oh, cool. So so we'll talk to him about uh, Dan, see how that's going. But Brian, man, thank you so much for being man, on the show. Nice I'm such here, a big fan of what you bro. do. I can't wait to, uh, to to get inside your mind, have you share with with everybody some of your creative process because this it's. There's, there's, there's things going on in your mind that just don't exist anywhere else with that <laughs> skill, your background. Uh, uh, you, you just laid on Herb and I while we were uh, uh, playing the ITL, you know, some, some things that... Uh, is that B? Uh -huh. Is that me? That's the answer. Beyonce, we're doing a show. We'll call you right back. Man, I just can't get away from her. <laughs> <laughs> Brian laid on us. He's he's doing some live shows and stuff. I mean, that, that that's so incredible. Let's start. Let's start with a, a quote that your dad said that just fascinated me. I, I'd love to meet your dad sometime. Check this out, Herb. He's, his dad said, "Do today what others won't do, so tomorrow you can do what others can't do." Love it. That ranks right up there with Greg's quotes. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's deep. Absolutely. And uh, it, it 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 I think that what little I know of Brian and what I'm learning that 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 seems to be a, a benchmark of your whole thought process, doesn't it? Yeah. Sure. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in, into music, because you started really young. You were six years old, taking piano lessons. You yes. went to a performing uh, arts high school. Yeah. So I mean, I started playing piano at six. Uh, my parents um, had a broke down piano in the house. Like it was a mind pinky. Mm -hmm. She had, had a piano. She's like, you can leave it at your house. So I just started kind of like banging on it. My parents were like, you know, it'd be good to give him piano lessons for discipline, for his, you know, the focus and yeah. Yeah, focus point. So I started taking piano lessons when I was six. Uh, it didn't go too well. The teacher actually said, uh, you know, my other brother was a, in, you know, playing the piano with my older brother. He said, he's the one. It's my older brother. And he's like, 
he's not focused. He 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 shouldn't play piano. Yeah. Wow. So I ended up stopping, and then I picked it back up. You know, I got like probably like nine or ten, and then I took a couple of uh, lessons, and I started playing by ear, and then mm -hmm. I moved on to, uh, by middle school. I was taking college courses, like I started classical music, uh, theory, and by middle school, middle you were school taking college courses. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, as far as because my ear was so advanced, you know, I can like my teachers would like show me how like are the the notes, and I just listen, I just like watch the hands and just mimic it. Wow. So I started taking interesting competitions, started writing my own music, and then after that, you know, went to high school and became a jazz player. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot of stuff that I really didn't care to learn, but it was just kind of like, oh, whatever. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't hear it, and I was so advanced as far as being able to hear it and play it. Hmm. Let, me, let me ask you this. Relative to, to, to your success in music, what, what, what part of that success do you attribute to, the, to the, what formal education you've had, and, and what, is just, what part of your success is just your God-given taste and talent? I would say uh, definitely everything is God, you know, God-given talent for sure, but I think the education I've had was, for me, was the discipline, to, to sit down and see something through. Mm. I, I was, I'm the type mm. of guy who comes in just, I'm like, oh, man, God. But education says stay. Do this, do that. So I think it was the process of actually having lessons that made me realize that scheduling, stuff like that, because, you know, being creative, I, you know, one minute is blue, one minute is red, and it's like, ah, I'm done. Literally in minutes. So the education part, is, and then this general theory helps me, you know, deal with like music changes and everything. Before is, um, you know, that is just time, probably even more, more so time in it mm. and everything. Mm. Can, from your, perspective can songwriting be learned I, I mean can can someone that that's not a songwriter learn to be a songwriter or do you have to start with a certain amount of gift for I it and then you, and then you can get better at it because you've gotten better at it right. wouldn't you say so you've learned something about it but 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 like can you make me a songwriter I think everyone can learn. I think it's the way you. Greg can. Wells couldn't make me Greg Wells. By the way, we tried, <laughs> didn't work out. Didn't work out. No. I think it's the way you condition your your mind. You know, for me, Say that again, please. the way you condition your mind. Because I think when people learn stuff, they so caught up on learning. And to me, I, I respect the technical aspects, but they so caught up on just the technical notes. It's like almost like for me, life inspires me. So it's like if I'm gonna learn something, I let my guards down and just kind of appreciate it from like a fan point. I learn from being a fan of it versus I need to learn this, learn this. So I think anyone can learn it. I, I mean, I, and I feel like you know some people just have it, some people mm -hmm. might not. But I think mm -hmm. anyone can develop it since I never was actual lyricist. Now I actually write lyrics because I've learned how to not be so caught up on I gotta learn. Did lyrics. you read any books or there again you hanging out with Esther Dean and all these talented people? You know what? I'm not a big reader. Uh, I just kind of uh, like student of life. Just what, what movies. Type, what, you absorb. I absorb, yeah. yeah. I used what to type read stuff books. do you read? I don't, I don't, I don't he read says he's not a reader. <laughs> like, oh, you're not a reader. I'll be feeling bad. My teacher's like, what did you read? I'm like, I don't read that many books. I read a couple of novels. You know, like Dream, uh, uh, the artist Dream, he, he gets a lot of inspiration from movies. That's that's who I am. That, I love movies, man. Like, in the scores. Oh. I love what music, how it, make, how it makes you feel. And I'm like, if I can trigger, you know, make someone feel the way I felt watching this, then I, I'm doing this for the rest yeah. of my life. Mm. And that's what inspires me as far mm. as movies and stuff. So or certain scenes. I might watch or play a scene over and over because mm. it made me feel a certain way. You, you know, I, I had a question because I, I'm, this is an observation. You tell me if it's, if it's grounded at all. <clears throat> a lot of times guys who learn the discipline of playing, because you're an extraordinary player, um, I think sort of combine this analog foundation with their digital sense and, and so that you always have a more in-depth kind of way to approach the technology. Like it's always grounded in something that's right, that's right. rooted. Is that is that fair to say? Because um, it shows up in your music to me. As far as? It, it's just that it's not just new. It's There's some stuff from the past and from oh, the discipline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you're from. saying you're not a slave to the technology. I don't know. I'm, I'm a musician first. Right. How I got into uh, actually making tracks was it was almost like an accident. Mm -hmm. a, a good friend of mine has, you know, was like, you, you play piano pretty well. You should make beats. I'm like, make beats? I'm a classical trained piano player. Right. <laughs> you mean? Like, oh, I'm, 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 it's, it's, you know, it defeats the whole purpose of who I am. I, I, dun, I, I dun, think dun, myself, dun. Yeah. How is that for a beat, dude? <laughs> As a concert piano, I was so complicated, like, oh, this, that, and other. But he was like, what you need to do is just chill out with all that and just listen to a beat and let it flow. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Mm. And uh, I remember being a freshman in high school. And I had to fill out classes, you know, A day, B day, and this, that, and other. And there was a, a segment that said applied technology. 
and it was a young lady who signed up for applied technology. I was like, well, shoot, there's either this or cooking or something. I'm yeah. like, I'm, where is she going? I'm going, right? She was cute. Right. But I didn't even know that it was, it, it taught master tracks and the whole concept of like the technical aspect and the, like beats. And I was like, I started appreciating it different because that's when I started getting into Timberland and understanding, like, oh, this is how this actually works. Uh, then I was like, oh, this is cool. So I kind of fell into it. it wasn't, I, didn't pers I didn't set out to do it. Right. So I, my, my biggest challenge was to, like, actually pull back from being a musician and right. actually turn myself into a producer. Right. And find that you, moment. Now you know proportionately. Yeah. Because now, yeah, yeah. now I'm at the point to where I can, like, be a producer today, a musician tomorrow. Got it. Or whoever right. I need to be, whatever I need to be. Got it. And I, I just think it helps define signatures. And, yeah. And, and the way you approach writing and, and right. songs and stuff. So. Um, you, you, during the course of creating a record, you wear a lot of hats. Uh, how do you feel um, your production chops enhance your writing skills? Do you, do you when you're writing, like like let's say. Let's say when Ernest Hemingway is writing a novel, he's not worrying about the movie they're going to make out of right, it. Right, he's working do you, do you at, at, at times write with production in mind, or you, you, you bring the production part of your skill set to bear later on? The good thing and the bad thing about being from Kansas City, it's never a bad thing to be from Kansas City, but the lack of knowledge of knowing what a producer actually does. and mm -hmm. isn't that, So I'm from Kansas City, so I never looked at it from like, you know, like a... I gotta produce, or I just kind of like flow into it. So with me, is I learn like how to piano player, mm -hmm. and then I start playing piano, mm -hmm. right to that, and then I say I can make a beat. I've kind of like really feel like music is just one big genre. So I never knew that I had to uh, to be a hip hop producer. I never knew that. Right. I always because my mom would listen to like jazz and Motown. My brother would listen to rap, and my sister listened to pop. I'm like. It's called music. I didn't look at genre. So mm. how I write is pretty much as simple as how I feel that day. Like mm. I feel like wearing a t-shirt. Mm. I might actually be working on rock stuff. And then mm. I say, I'm uh, working on Nashville. I'm just strictly piano playing. Mm. And I never, I kind of have the visual of where I want it to be. And my whole goal is to inspire and change life. So and my, my whole concept is like, this is what it's going to feel like, no matter what it is. And now I'm just now appreciating and say, I'm going to write the song. And then I'm going to produce it tomorrow versus, I, I don't have, and I used to be like a beat first, this, that now it's just like, you know, whatever they feel whatever like. Whatever comes. Yeah, whatever comes. But yeah. it definitely, I think for me, it's starting at the, the song process as far as playing the piano or picking up a guitar and turning that into and building up versus just mm. a beat and, you know. Very mm. cool, very cool. Uh, uh, the perception of a, of a songwriter a lot of times is a guy having inspiration, writing lyrics on a napkin during dinner and, and like, Making notes and right. like like your lyrics are quite good. In fact, uh, on uh, I think it's on your website. Uh, Kelly Clarkson actually wrote out the lyrics that you wrote for her. She was so right. proud of them. And uh, how does your process work for that? Is it just life experiences? Or are you constantly going to yourself? Oh, I like that little phrase. I'm gonna remember it. Or do right. you keep well, notes and logs and journals <laughs> right. like some people? Well, that particular song was written by Esther Dean. Like the lyrics was Esther mm -hmm. Dean and Brad James. But how I normally write. Um, Records, uh, like if we're talking about something, you say something that catches my attention. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm on it. Uh, I used to be that guy who wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and record, mm -hmm. but I feel like greatness happens. Like, you just got to be there to catch it. Like, so I'll wake up, and then I'll wait for greatness to happen versus, like, I'm not going to, because the thing is, almost, I was that musician who was like, you hear the bass line? They were like, no, I don't hear the bass line. Right, right. I'm right. like, you know, let, let me slow down being obsessive. So what I do is, but sometime throughout the day, I, I wake up, I work out, and I position myself to be inspired. I go to the studio and I'm like, this is that moment. I laughed or something happened. And then right in that moment, I have them the day to do it. Wow. So I don't I wanna say enslave to my creativity because it can mm -hmm. take over and you, yeah, you, you mess up a date or something like that. They'd be like, what are you talking about? The baseline. The right, baseline. right, man. It's I like, yo, you chill yeah. out, man. Like yeah, right, relax. Chill, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> for me it's um, it's more uh, about knowing myself to know like if I position myself, you know, to be in a better mood or, or I, I wake up and say, I'm, I'm not trying to write a hit song, but to have a great day. And then my great day is going to be greatness from that. And I'll take that greatness. So, so is it fair to say that there's a certain environment where your, your creativity flourishes that day? Is there, is there a way to enhance your creativity, or are there things that diminish it? Are, are you susceptible to your surroundings, or do you, do you have to create in a studio? Yeah, yeah. it's definitely... Uh, Vibes, energies, uh, you know, like I'm blessed. My dad uh, remodeled a studio for me. I have my own studio now, so I kind of, mm. it's like my studio. So like I can go church. ahead. See, yeah, it's like church. It's yeah, like yeah. this is what, yeah. and sometimes it, it, it all depends. Someone can come in and not be in a mood. I, I try to work on that because I know their problem is not my problem, but I can't help but to 
if you come in and like, Bob is messed up, it's like, you know what? Energy I think man. not knowing knowing when not to do something is important as knowing when to do something. Yeah, I agree. I'm not that guy like, oh, I stay in the studio too. I, you know, I sleep when I'm dead. No, I'm not trying to die to sleep, man. I, I go home too, and sleep. I? <laughs> I go to sleep, man. I'm like, yeah, we do this tomorrow. And that's what Nashville taught me. Um, but as far as, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely those moments where it's like, you know. What did, uh, what was the Quincy Jones quote about? It, essentially, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but at Quincy said something like he he didn't like to record at home. He liked to only record in the studio because that's when God came in. Yeah, yeah. Leave enough room for, yeah, leave, leave leave room. room for yeah, God and, to and come people, in the studio. And it's so crazy because we're dealing with certain writers. I, I respect everyone, you know, mm -hmm. physically, but some egos come into play. Mm -hmm. and then you got, this is Howard. That's, to me as a producer, my, guy, my job is to conform to whatever the artist wants. I want to make the artist feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, you know, if it's not if it's not gonna work, it's not gonna work, man. Like you know, mm -hmm. I can't force it. Mm -hmm. you know? But if, mm -hmm. it, if it is, let's let's do it. And knowing when to take a lunch break, or because mm -hmm. when so many people, my, my biggest thing is when you. I think overthinking. I'm just not that guy. I've been in sessions where I was like, yo, man, this is we're taking too much on one line. Let's just let it happen. To me, it just happens. Like when I go to the studio and just flows. Well, I think that's your genius. I really do. Um, Herb, you've been around, of course, when you manage Brian McKnight. This is a question that, 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 please don't feel insulted, but a lot of people I know want to know this. When you, when you go into an environment where you're writing with other people, and, and, and don't laugh now, but a lot of people want to know, do you do the splits before you start writing? Do you wait till after and then you send your manager in? How do you, how do you divide up the pie? Hmm. And at what point should a writer actually divide up the pie? Because um, I had an experience where I thought I was writing, and at the end of the day, the <laughs> person I was with didn't think I was writing. And all, I'm not a, I'm not a, yeah, like, yeah, well, I'm not a writer. I'm a mixer, so I didn't, it didn't really bother me. But mm -hmm. is is that some some wisdom that you you two can impart to our audience? Well, I definitely feel like uh, I'm just at this point in my career. I'm I'm researching before I work with you. Uh, I kind of want to know where you stand. Now, the thing is, we can't split anything that's not created yet. It takes the fun out of it, like, so I'm going to get... Right. So someone talks about splits before we do it, it's like, yo, seriously, uh, nowadays, if it's a collaborative effort, it's going to naturally be, to me, it's going to be split, mm -hmm. like, equally, on the writer side. Mm -hmm. Now, if I come with the concept already, and I got the verse, and somebody come in and write a bridge, we, it's negotiable, but I feel like it should definitely be dealt with. Because that's one of the biggest problems that I mm -hmm. face is, like, yeah, perfect, and the next day, it's like, well, he said he wants this, and, and she says he want, wants yep. this, and I... I think uh, I like to write with people with common goals. If yep. we're here to inspire, that's cool. I've literally turned out sessions because of greed. Like, it's, I'm not here for the money's going to come. And um, it affects the song. I mean, when you're writing for a split. I see somebody actually add up, take words and be like, I have seen it too. I like it. Well, let's take a story. The whole story. <laughs> there's a, there's, a, there's a, a story in Atlanta about a really famous band. I'm not going to embarrass anybody, but huge. Everybody knows them. And the drummer decided that. that he would change, literally, this is true, or at least it's told to me it's true, change an A to a the, and went out in the parking lot fighting because he wanted writer's credit mm -hmm. for that. Really? Yeah. yeah. That, that's and he got it. It goes down. I don't right know there. what percentage it was. It might have been one thousandth of a percent, but he got his writer's credit. But, but it's, an, it's an insane, it's a conversation that has to be had. You have to know when to have it, which I tend to find is write the song and sit there right then and then sort of figure out afterwards because all the inspiration like, hey, is out of the way. What you think it's supposed to be? Exactly, and then work it out because well, it's right like, there. Uh, well, Once you go it. home and come back, well, Everybody problems. thinks they contributed more than they did. I think that's kind of normal. So it makes people like Brian selective about who to work with. And, Seriously. Right? Seriously. Yeah, because the process... It affects, it affects your it decision. Which, which is another reason so why. So you, you try to work with a... With, with professionals, then. Mm -hmm. well, and also people you're comfortable with. Right, right. And, and I'm, I'm actually blessed to have a publishing company. Mm -hmm. And the writers I work with, it, the writers that I've signed, so it's like a, a win, win, win because we all get, get it. It's like yeah. you're gonna do. And then certain writers, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about communication. Yeah. Because I rather have 25% of a hit than 100% of. Right. Nothing. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you, at, at some point, you have to give up something. Yeah. And I realize that because some, some people, you come into someone's situation. I work with producers who had situations without their names being attached. So it's, yeah. it's you gotta just know, honestly, you gotta know when to fold. You gotta know when to, to stem the ground. when to hold them. Yeah, you gotta know when to hold them. You can't, yeah. you can't yeah. go, you can't boss up fast. <laughs> right. And then you like, they're like, who are you anyway, man? Matter yeah. of fact, take out the word. So you gotta just kinda, it's like almost instinct. You gotta be just as effective on your business 
that's creative. I know a lot of people. Like, I'll just be creative. If you got a business partner, that's different. But you know, in my well, case, my manager. Yeah. He he goes hard. Tom takes care yeah, of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, his, his name is Tom Faye. Oh, I know. I just want yeah. to get him. Yeah. 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 Got to take care of the managers, right, Herb? Yeah, listen, man, we, we absolutely we we appreciate that. By the way, mm -hmm. so I don't. And who was your publicist again? Uh, it's Universal Music Publisher. Okay. Who's your publicist? Oh, a publicist. Uh, publicist or publisher? Aaron. Aaron. What was her last name? Earls. Oh, okay. She's sitting over in the corner. I know. I know. <laughs> Hi, Aaron. Uh, actually, when. Your name came up, which was early on as we do our, um, our sort of request. One of the things that I try to tell our audience is that, and they're oftentimes either trying to figure out how to make a move in the business, who to get with, and, and oftentimes when it's, the, when it's the hit business, it's hard for those guys to think beyond a commercial studio or hooking up with a producer, whatever the case may be. And I tell them oftentimes, find the writer in your town. It, today, if you're going to write a song, there's some technical aspect that's going to come into it. And, you know, you could work for publishing companies, you could work for writers. It's not always the hot producer or yeah, the yeah, commercial studio. That. Right? That. Yeah, it's, it, to me, I don't, a great song is going to, you know, depending on what the right situation, but I feel like whatever it takes for you to create, you know, even if it's like someone in your hometown, yeah. you, you, what you need to do is, I think, in my personal opinion, is find your sound. Absolutely. A lot of people are so caught up. I've been in situations with tons of writers that have the opportunity. I meet them, they say, I'm ready to write with you, write with you. And I work with them, it's like, you wasn't ready because you don't know who you are. Yeah. So I think creating a team, your own team, as far as even in your hometown, is yeah. important because when you come to a situation, you can come bring in right. something you've already created. Right, right. Because then, then again, like, because a few years ago, I was literally, my name was not even heard of, mm -hmm. so, and I, and, I, and I feel like I haven't even made it. Like, I'm, I'm working to get to where I want to get. That's kind of what's great about you. Yeah. Right? Like, if you, if you check on you, as many people know BK, and as many people know the hits, and so on and so forth, you have such a cool vibe out there that there's something appealing about somebody not grabbing the reins and going, yeah, I'm the, you know, yeah, I'm the man. shit. You're only good as your last second of a moment. And moment. it can go away <laughs> like that. As you, yeah, as it goes you know, with, no. yeah. And I'm defined myself by what I've done because right. that's who I was last week. Today right. is a so new day. About the future. Right. It's cool. You, um, you've um, paid close attention to the careers of Quincy and, and yeah. David Foster. and um, how, how has that influenced and shaped the way you approach music? Do you use your influences as uh, guidelines, uh, kind of <clears throat> inspiration when roadblocks come along, or how do you how how, how does someone with your creativity use their influences in terms well, I have, of? I have a um, Smokey Robinson. Yeah, yeah, I have the opportunity, opportunity to actually work with uh, David Foster before at his mm -hmm. place. He was playing the piano, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing about those guys, I feel like that inspired me the most is when you read a book or you hear about them, they're very sure of themselves. As again, and to me, it's like about as a person, where you are as a being. And I noticed that when the ultra successful people, Diane Warren, people I've worked with, yeah. and met, yeah. everyone's different. Yeah. But one thing that they all have in common is a certain surety yeah. about well, knowing. Diane, nobody has a better work ethic than Diane. Though. Man, I'm like, I feel bad. Grief, I'm like, Yo. What people don't know is how long that work ethic's gone on. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're talking about 30 years. Of and, that and, and, it's, and, it's, and again, it's, it's life. Diane Secret. works like she's yeah. got to pay the rent every yeah, day. Every day. Yeah. I'm like, Yo, seriously? Yeah, it's true. That's yeah, but, true. but it's just, it becomes. A life is part of your life. I think when you, I think a lot of people look at it from a, I think people look at it from a job perspective, like, I gotta get up, I gotta get these sounds. I think when you put yourself in a position where, like, again, you come in and you say, this is what I do, this is part of who I am, when it's part of who you am, or who you are. Who you am? Yeah, who you am, wow. Uh, that's Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, okay. that's some other stuff. Kansas City, Canada, <laughs> in Spanish. In part of who you are. A, yeah. Well, I'd be having another question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be <laughs> I'd be having a good Dave, you're hanging around with too many brothers. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not one? No, no, no. Let's talk about that later. Um, I gotta do a blood test on you. Rejection. You, 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 you tossed off a, 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 a little sentence about rejection. And um, I went through a lot of rejection early part of my career. And um, how, how, do you hand, how do you take rejection? and make it something positive. Like I hear business people in the business world say that failure is part of success. In other words, I did that, didn't work, now I don't have to do it again. Right. How did you, did, how did you handle rejection? Because that's, that's tough, man. I have my feelings that's hurt real for a day tough. At, at most. Say uh, it again, I, I was talking. I have my feelings hurt for one day at most. Gotcha. And I, I realized that uh, 
That's just that's just everything. Like even from school, like you take a test, you fail it, you learn from the mistakes you make, and you take it and you roll with it. Some people take it and let it destroy them. Like oh, maybe it's not for me. Do you assume that the rejection is because of some inadequacy on your part, or you assume the rejection is because some kind of inadequacy on the person rejecting you's part? Both, <laughs> and also timing. I think timing comes into play as well. Like at that very like it's even calculation. Like I, say for instance, uh, your executive, I play your song. And you're focused on your daughter because she has to go to graduation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, good song. I'll check with you later. And it's like, oh, not the right song. It wasn't the right moment. So I'm only dis discouraged. I say, all right, I'm going to find a different approach. And it's just because I, I play songs for people who was like, no. And then the next day, it's like, I love this song. So it's, mm -hmm. it's all, that goes into effect. I think people automatically in strains is be like, oh, yeah, well, it's my fault because something I didn't do right. And it's not, it's not so much as what you didn't do right. It's, just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. How, how do you know when you do something good? Like your mama tells you everything's good. How do you know? Are, are you, uh, are, are, the, are your favorite records always your biggest records? I mean, how do you know when you do something good? It's just a feeling I get. Uh, it's more as a touch with my like instincts, whatever. Like I, that's an important it's a, gift to have, isn't it? You know, and that's, that's, and that's how I was able to even have a, a publishing company to even, I had, I, did, I had a gift since I was younger to listen, to see the, the great and the potential and people as far as what they can do. Um, some stuff I learned the hard way uh, before, like I said, as a fan, and then me having all these years of training in Kansas City and kind of being well-rounded from jazz to pop to classical, I kind of, 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 of like, like um, collected all the information and was able to yeah. come out here and be like, okay, this is good, this is not. Because when I first came here, I was like, I'm nervous because L.A. is more people, but sure. it's the quality, not the quantity. Right. And uh, right. I just had some good training. And so now I know what feels right and what's not right and when to play, how to play. And just kind of like I can sit back and read people to the point to where I'm like, this is what you want to hear. I'll be, and that's why when I go in sessions, I don't go in sessions like, well, here we're gonna make. I'm gonna say, how's your how's your day, man? So who are you? And then like by the time we laughing, and then I play the beat, and it's like, yeah, this is cool, because you as a, as a you know we're, we're human. We want to be uh, connect. Yeah, we want to connect. Yeah. I, I mean, music to me is everything for me, but it's second to life, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's what we do. Mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. You know, no, I, I know what you're saying. For me. Um, I go through periods where I hate everything I do. I mean, I, I, I'll go through, I'll call Drew in the room and like, is this any good? Am I, am I losing it? I mean, oh, yeah, no, I, uh, it's like, I, I wish, and then there's days when, and that gets me in trouble, and then there's days when I think, I think, wow, I'm good, yeah, but yeah. I ain't. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. it's, it's, creativity is just, it's so weird. One of, one of the things I notice about you among many that I re respect and admire, is you've got a knack for sounding modern without sounding trendy. Right. And um, is that, you made the statement earlier about, uh, it's about timing. Right. It, like, like you don't want to be five years ahead of the crowd and be modern, but yet, do you consider that as, as, as part of what you're doing, or you just do it and, and, and because you're, 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 you're so immersed in what you do, you just stay on top in terms of of sounding I modern? I separate. And is that part of the timing you were talking about earlier about you can play a song for a guy and it just might not be oh, the yeah, right yeah. time? Is right. That, is that all the right connected? time or either sound. It's, it's connected. But for me, um, um, I, had a, I had a thought. It just left me. Uh, well, it'll come back. It'll come back. Uh, it, 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 I, I, one of the reasons I tried being a songwriter and, and Pretty much everybody hated what I did. It, even my mom wasn't too complimentary. That hurt. But um, it's, a lot of people think that writing a song is just the ability to write one. But there's it's people that are better at it. And 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 and, and simplicity is mm -hmm. is just something I respect. And then uh, like artists like Dream or uh, a lot of the rappers, it's 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 that that Oscar Wilde ability to manipulate the English language right. in such a way that you go, golly, that's a great way to say that, you know? Right. I, uh, I also, I feel like well, my thought I had was, I think it's about a matter of knowing how to separate, um, like when you go to movies, like how to be an actor, but appreciate an actor, how to be a musician and appreciate a musician. Like I said, it's that whole syndrome of, you hear that bass line, you hear that key change. It's like, no, I, I can go to, I appreciate going to concerts as a flat out fan. Mm -hmm. So when I listen, I don't listen to mimic. I listen to say, okay, this is what's special about this production, mm -hmm. and this is, and to me, melody rules. Of course, lyrics rules as well. But I'm a melody guy for sure. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what year, which time in life, a, mel a great melody will always see through. And then even if it's dated, 
what well, technology now, you can just change the sounds on it mm -hmm. and get the right drum kick. But to me, it's when I listen to radio, I'm not a producer. I'm just a, a, a fan of a. Yeah. There were there were people in your in the early development of your musical career that that were pretty impressed with your ability to retain melodies. Is that part of your creativity that you can actually? Um, you, is there a lot going on up there? Oh yeah, it's. I mean, I have a melody for any every situation. I'm always ready, man. Like it's, that's all I know. You know, I, I hear things. I have like kind of like a sound bank of melodies in my head. Because mm. again, I'm a piano player and I, I play by heart. You know, by ear, or whatever you yeah. call it. But like, I play better with my eyes closed. Like I feel it. It's, it's mm. always in me. So it's like, mm. I can like I can look at a picture or a painting or mm -hmm. something like I know what sound that is. Mm -hmm. So I capture. Uh, my music through visual images. You know? Is there a difference between a melody five, we're talking about the pop world, uh, the Hot 100 Billboard, is there a difference between a melody from five years ago and a melody today? I know there's a difference between melodies from the 40s, because I'm on XM Satellite Radio, I'm always 40s, 50s, 60s, and you can, like the 40s and 50s, they loved whole notes, and then now we like da 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 right. we, yeah. You know, we don't whole notes out, but, but uh, do you feel there's a... a I think uh, it's similarity. I think it's what it is now as verse versus then is just phrasing and chopping it up. Like timing issues. Like instead of like, say for instance, something 16 measures, we chop it up and take half that and play. It's like uh -huh. almost like logic, you know, you creating, you take this melody, because everything stems. I can show you some songs that I like, that, that I'm inspired by that I can just disguise and be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the first half of this melody and then put this on it. And people, and it's that, and that's that whole concept to be able to do it like a modern feel because it's like you recognize it, but you can't recognize it. Of the, the old same. guys, uh, like Smokey, that crowd, wh wh whose melodies do you have the most respect for? Somebody like Stevie? Stevie and Crazy Night, Brian Mo McKnight. That's the, that's the craziest thing like, oh, I grew up. The, um, Brian's, uh, I, I, such I, a I, I was blessed to work with Brian through Herbs. Uh, man, Brian is just, Brian is so good you want to hurt him. Yeah, I man, mean, on the keys. Just, crazy. I, that's what, that's what, as a matter of fact, it was a turning point as me being a musician. I went to one of his shows and mm. he was just playing the piano and mm -hmm. just, I'm like, how does that work? He's just sitting like this and started playing the piano. So I got to do that. That's and, I gotta and do that. can play <laughs> 10 instruments. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people didn't remember, know. Remember right before any time, right after we'd done um, Crazy Love, Brian decided to pick up the guitar on a Thursday and on Saturday he came in and did a session. A lot of that. And wow. it's just a, but it's interesting you, you draw those similarities and, and we want to get ready to go to corner office, but um, that ability to go in and write using intuition and feel, using intellect but not letting it get in the way, right, there, there's a lot of similarities in, in, in your approach. And, and that bass being the piano coming from there and moving on is so I, I get the similarities. Yeah, you, 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 you feel like the that it's authentic. I got one last question here, but this is important to me. No, that's not. Good. When you <laughs> when when you got these melodies and you're creating from that from from your heart, do you ever consciously think, um, um, okay, here's this this little piece is, reminds me of off the wall. I like that. This little piece reminds me of one last cry. This little piece remind. You, the, the, the melodies just flow out, and then you later might think about it. But you, do you ever, are you ever thinking consciously about the melodies that are stored up there? Not really, because how I do it, because I have also, a, I come from a band background. I have a band called the Brian Kenny Project. And that's mm -hmm. why I start off as a musician. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I used to do shows every week. Now we just, like I said, I was telling you, we're mm -hmm. actually working on our, our music now. Can't wait. But the thing is, when I produce, I'm so used to being thrown into the fire, like, in front of everybody. See, I was in sessions with, like, polos and yep. timberlands, and they say, come come do this. And it'd be, like, 20 people in a room. Right. I say, either I'm going to sink or drown. So I turn into a showman. I have a show. So when I make music, it's a, I'm, I'm a, the curtains that's, are open, man. That's genius. So it's mm -hmm. like, so when I perform, so when I play, it's like, it's that feeling of being on stage when you find that riff and you start doing it because it just feels good. That's how I produce. So when anybody's around, it's always one of the things that's like, Okay. Mm. <laughs> Will you let us know when you're playing so we can let I'm our sure. listeners know As to come fact, see? As a matter of fact, throw up Brian's graphic to his website and stuff now because he's got good stuff coming on 11 11 11 from what mm -hmm. he shares with me. There you and, go. Uh, there you go. Make sure you check all that stuff out. Uh, the Brian Candy movement, which is going to be a really cool, I won't call it a jam band thing, but yeah. it's different than that. It's different. We, I'm, as we speak, we're trying to find the sound. Okay. It's me, uh, Titus Johnson, the Wayne yeah. Whitmore. Yeah. We're all from the same city, and it's the crazy part about everyone, everyone I work with. We all grew up together. Incredible. So it's like, and his voice, yeah, I mean, y'all hear it, but it's, it's called the Brian Kennedy Project. Right. And we've been doing shows, casinos, book is out in right. Missouri, but I feel like we should do original music because we owe it to ourselves and to people. Why not? It's just it's fun. Yeah, All right, Branson. Cool. 
I once, I think once. Vacation. I've never been there. Is it? You know, yeah, it's I, chill, I, man. I, yeah. Talk to the Ozarks. Like boats and stuff. Fun. I like boats. You <laughs> like boats. You guys should go together. Boats huh? get together and go mm. to the We make some records? <laughs> no, okay. We, we, make make some records. Records. we get stuff done. Hey, we can go wherever, yeah, man. If, if, I had had a manager, <laughs> if I had a manager to give me a damn day off, I might be able to, like, go to Pacoima. <laughs> you better change your current manager. <laughs> 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 Let's go to the corner office. Drew, you got some folks over there? I do, I do. All um, right, so who <laughs> got hauled away by the FCC? <laughs> Forget the finger. Uh, from Richie Palooza, uh, how do you manage a session as a producer in terms of your relationship between artist and engineer? Is Lala his sister? Who? Lala Palooza. Yeah. <laughs> ah. That's horrible. Sorry. Zing. Good. Uh, who, are you, who are you asking for? Uh, Richie Palooza. Uh, oh, for but, Brian. Okay. Sorry. Brian. What's the question? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, how do you manage a session as a producer in terms of your relationship between artist and engineer? Do you find it difficult to communicate with them? Um, I've, I've, uh, I have an engineer that I work with named Sean Tallman, and I think, uh, from my perspective, is excellent engineer. He's, he's good. He's great. Tell my son hello. Yeah, see, I think he's watching now, probably. Good, good. <laughs> uh, What's up, man? What's up? <laughs> I think the important part about it is developing a relationship with your engineer, because a lot of cats I notice here's the engineer, here's the producer. I think it's uh, developing a relationship, so it's, mm -hmm. it's easy for me exactly. because Sean knows me like the back of my hand. So, so we are already in sync. Before the guy comes in, me and Sean's like, this is what we're gonna do. So I don't think it's, I think it depends on the session, but if you happen to go work somewhere you don't know, it's about communicating with them. And it's, like, it's like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. It's, just, yeah, it's I think got it's, to have that kind of relationship. To me, we set it up as Hit us, Drew. Cool. Uh, from Leo Saramago. Uh, oh, we know I, Leo. We know Leo. Leo's oh, really? A lot. Okay. Uh, What's Me, up, being, a, being a classically trained musician like yourself, uh, do you feel songwriting has become over minimalistic in the past decade? Wow, that's a serious question. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, say it one more time again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you feel songwriting has become over minimalistic in the past decade? I don't. I don't think so. I think it's something for everyone. Yeah. I think what's showcased is the Hot 100, yeah. and that's good. But can I, can I answer yeah. this? You mind? Yeah, go ahead. Leo, check this out. There's paper plates and there's fine china. You don't spend a lot of time decorating and paying for artists to, to decorate paper plates. You save that for fine china. The, the, the non-minimalistic music is out there. We just don't get exposed to it. So it's our job to hunt it down. There's tons and tons and tons of gifted musicians out there working their butts off. Popular music is not designed to be anything other than the disposability of a paper plate. There are forms of music that are designed to be fine china, and we should support those. Wow, agreed, agreed. Heavy, huh? Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> hey, I was, I was say the same thing. That's why it's called Pisado's <laughs> Place. <laughs> I knew you were going to. I was like, no, that's what I'm about to say. That, you, that's that touched a nerve with me because... Um, we like when you get angry. We all get upset that, about, about this, 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 but yet we don't support it. So let me ask you an athletic question. How's your arm? You ready, for, you ready to throw a batter's box? I think I'm gonna strike Brian out. Today. Oh, okay, cool. I don't think so. I, I think I think Brian's a competitor. I think Roll the graphic, Will. It's batter's box time. Uh, there it is. All right, roll them up. Fire day. Our Ryan does great graphics. So um, I'm gonna say it. Tell me the first thing that pops into your mind. Bass. Uh, garage band. Digimono. Sign bass. Cool. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, substitute for an acoustic piano. Um, Alicia Keys, contact. Contact is the plug-in, but Alicia Keys plug-in. Right, mm. cool. Strings? Uh, EX24, uh, stock one. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm losing her. I'm, fa I'm, I'm he's, dying he's here. He's knocking these out of the park. Okay, I got him, I got him. Cool. Acoustic guitar. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> real guitar. Bass on <laughs> Real guitar. Yeah, real guitar. There you go. Uh, okay. There you go. Um, pads. Pad type oh, sounds. Um, I would say another, uh, shoot, I think it's Matrix pads. And then uh, S and EX24 as well, stock, another stock sound. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you, what's your go to road sound when you don't have a real one? I'm sure you got a real one. Uh, it's e, I think ES1. It's, it's another stock sound, again, uh, that comes with, with Logic. Oh, cool. Man, Fender, like, everybody you know. says those sounds are great. This is good. Um, when, when you want to be creative and, and you want to get an idea and, and retain that idea, what keyboard do you walk up to first? Yeah, my M-Audio. Okay, I, have, I have a few of them uh, for every place I'm at. Like, a, I think a 
44 key or 64 key, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I plug it into my logics and just kind of, or my key, uh, my piano, I have a piano at home. Mm. And when I'm at home, I just get you my carry piano. that with you too. Yeah, I put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in my pocket when I'm playing. I saw a piano outside when we walked in. Uh, no wonder I can't win batter's box. You get me. Um, uh, what's 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 your favorite sounding synth under fifteen hundred dollars? Uh, EX twenty four Dancy Octave stock off of Logic again, and that's come with Logic for five hundred bucks free. Mm. Because wow. with this, with this mm. logic. Man, good job. He, he got yeah, me. He was, he was I killer. got one strike. I couldn't strike him out. He was a killer. Absolutely. Uh, uh, just an aside, um, I've noticed over the last five years the quality of virtual synthesizers has just been incredible. You, you don't have any problem going virtual or analog. I mean, you float between everything mm -hmm. effortlessly and flawlessly. And you, it works right. out perfectly. Uh, when I was playing with other producers, I would use like the analog stuff. Mm -hmm. Like this, if there's a sound, I'm pushing it. Like I'm that, I'm that guy. Like I'm like, all right, cool. Whatever sound, I'll make it work. You know, that's my challenge. Like, right. you know, a lot of people spend. To me, time is not even. I want to say money. Time is the moment you could be creating. So any sound, I, I just it's a challenge to make it. Like if I make the sound sound good, then I'm I'm pretty much good at what I do. That's my challenge. Now, I have a question. I think that's genius. I think that bears repeating because I've noticed that that, that Alex the Kid said something similar. Phil Tan said something similar. There's something to be said in what you said to, to minimalize your tools, don't have 8,000 things, and to minimalize the time you allow to yourself to create something. Like uh, a friend of mine who passed, Paul Davis, Paul wrote four or five huge number one records, and he, Paul always said, by the time you fix a song, you can write five other better right. ones. I agree. Uh, but, I totally agree. But I, I love what you just said. I got to apply that to the mix world, because sometimes... I was working with Shakira, and man, I can't remember how many hours we spent on a hi hat. But when we were done, it was a great hi hat. <laughs> but 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 that, she works that way, and I, I support right. that with her because she's man, phew, she's so incredible. Like that, but yeah. but but for you, that doesn't work. No, I've, I've learned, and even my studio, I have it set up to where I have several rooms. So even if someone wants to work on hi hat for however long. Here's the engineer. Here's the sounds. Go <laughs> for it. And I always push people to the driver's yeah. seat. I said hi hat. I meant to say marimba. In oh fact, yeah, it sounds in fact, she was so sweet. She made me a T-shirt. More marimba. Uh, that's funny. Instead that's of more great. cowbell. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Will you come back? Of course. Man, thank Anytime, you so much. Man. I had a great time here. I appreciate you. Man, guys. we so sure. appreciate it so much. You give me a handshake, man. You gonna let me hang? No, let's go another hour. What are you uh, I'm down. We will. Let's do two. Uh, <laughs> when he comes back. Man, I tell you what. Brian, I appreciate your honesty and your candor and your your willingness to share. I think I can go home and write a damn song, Drew. No, no, he's good, but he ain't that good. <laughs> no, I mean, he's fantastic. Hey, just give me some concepts, man. I wrote. I have your demo um, reel. One's 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 too many, a million's not enough. Ooh, it's like a Kenny Chesney record. One drinks is uh, not enough, and one more. Is Take oh, this. How about this one? The He's more the only person who's going to say stuff this kind. <laughs> the more I learn about. No, it's not the same as the Katie Chase single. It I, is. I got it. <laughs> Just take, take, take this to Nashville. The more I learn about women, the more I love my truck. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Uh, well, it was a great day here again. And, uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the Shadow Hills giveaway, the mono optograph. You can enter right there. You see below. Make sure you enter. You want to win this thing. It, it, it's an absolute fantastic piece, as Dave has attested to, and Greg Wells. And Greg Wells attested to how cool Brian Kennedy is. What a, what a, how much can we thank you and Aaron for making this possible? Absolutely. Always got a place here at the table. Checks. Huh? I take checks, man, money orders. We'll talk about that later because <laughs> we like the same thing. You're on your way to being a manager. It's <laughs> all writing down. No, I, had, I feel just as. We get paid for this, Herb? How come the checks don't no, no, make it past no. your he mailbox? He wants to get paid. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I had a great time, man. This is, I appreciate what you guys thank are doing. Thank you so now, much. I, I feel honored to even be on here. And we're honored Seriously. to have Yeah, please come back anytime and. Uh, seriously, let us know when you're playing so we can alert everybody because hey, I know they want to come see you. We, we have more to talk about. Cool. Let's go home, Dave. Okay, guys. Uh, apologize for the hairdo, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>